Hey everybody, welcome back to the silent loading screen. <laughs> Spirit plays Spiral Nights, you know. So we're, we got before we're trying to get some see some radiance, right? I think the shortcut today. We're gonna do either so it's a toss up between Vanaduke and I need crowns too, so just like rolling. Oh yeah, that's right. They did kick me out here. That overhead perspective is very interesting. Anybody doing anything? Mecca? Lockdown? No. I, I suppose we could invest in uh, Nindef. We could invest in um, doing some of the prestige, but I, I don't think I'm going to get enough pages to have it honestly really matter. So let's um, do some dreams and nightmares, I suppose. Come on, buddy. <laughs> so let's while well, we're thinking about it, let's, let's uh, pop some fundage into energy so we can support our our trinket habit. Excuse me. And we'll flourish it up. And I think we're good. I think that's good. Beautiful. All right, let's do some dreams and nightmares. I want to at least accelerate to the point where you know if we can get our valance up to a, a decent, decent level. I I know it's still on my uh, my to do list to get to. A, hello, tiny girl. You are up very early. It's four a.m. and you brought a bunny. <laughs> my daughter's gonna join us anyway. We've been talking about the uh, so I'm, I'm just seeing my seven year olds here. We're gonna we're gonna talk about a philosophy. You can't sit on my lap, so if you want a chair, you gotta go get one on your own. And that's fine. My bunny. Oh no, the other daughter's awake too. Too. We have to give her a bunny. Bye bye, Winter. <laughs> gave her a bunny. So anyway, we were talking about the the essence of ethics. We can do this while uh, going through, I believe. Now, why wouldn't I just use a sword? I like using this because um, it doesn't catch them on fire, and I still have graphics sitting on high, so I might have to turn that off. It might destroy my computer. Please. Boom. So today we're going to be going over uh, AJ Ayer. Um, last time we went over more, so if you want a chair, Winter, you got to get a chair by yourself. Okay, you can't sit in my lap. Winter, yeah. you can sit on this chair. Oh, that's nice of you, honey. So let's uh, stand by, just for my own sanity frame rate's sake, especially once we get into all these little graphical polygons. Oh, you're playing this? I am Lovely. playing this. This is uh, Dreams and Nightmares. It's a tough one. So, uh, so we ever went over more, right? More is a philosophy and intrinsic goodness. Now, you cannot define uh, goodness in itself. Besides, it's just good. You can't put any quantifiable thing there. Well, Ayer does kind of like the same thing with this emotivism. Um, he tries to throw logical questions to find the root of ethics and morals. Um, uh, through his talks, he makes a like a lot of good points, and um, I might be quoting from uh, you know one or two of his books here because he's just a he's a he's a really good thinker, and he, he makes a, a you know a lot of good points along with just about everybody else. Any old modern philosophy note. Is my wife also going to join me? <laughs> Let's just have a family stream at four in the morning. Oh, there goes Winter. You going to stay here? Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> logically, any suggestion to morals must appear either logically, or sorry, empirical or tautological. Empirical means, but you know, based on observation. Tautological means repeatable. You know, the scientific experiment where you want to repeat. Uh, you want something that's you know repeatable throughout history, repeatable throughout the ages, and through through example and that kind of thing. Let's go land. We can do some deep thinking while we work. This is how we have deep conversations during work. Yeah, Eric proposes that uh, most philosophy when talking about morals and ethics or emotion, it's not really philosophy, it's pseudo-philosophy. He gets on the, the point, which I agree with, that um, you, you can't make emotions quantifiable because they're 
if you when you're looking for like we were talking about um, modern truth, right? So modern truth itself, let's uh, get in here. Modern truth itself is based on, so sorry, modernism is based on that there is such a thing as truth. So pardon me. You have to get to that point where, you know, there is there are absolutes. So when you're trying to find like moral absolutes, then you're trying to get something that's you know real and fundamental. And if you're trying, you got to kind of attribute that to logical fact. Otherwise, you're you're going to fallacy. Subjectivism is not the goal, right? We're trying to find truth. You know, we we saw a little bit of this with Nietzsche. We saw a little bit of this with Moore. I forget who else we went over. I have to look at my notes here, but now it's not the time. Now we need to fight evil skeletons. My list is running our direction. All right, hold on. See you. I brought a I brought a poker just for these guys. Please stand by. Repositioning. Oop. Did not feel good, <laughs> Mike. Thank you. There's a heart. There is a heart. There's a lot of hearts. Now, any he's right. So the uh, what what Air talks about is that any oh, anytime you put anything to a quantity like that. You're immediately, uh... You can do it, Dad. Get, Thank you. You're immediately getting rid of the, uh, these, uh, the, uh, the, the moral implications. You can't make a truth claim based on subjectivism, um, or based on emotivism. Because if you do, you're, you're not really making a logical claim. Um, like, stealing is wrong. Well, I mean, what did you say? You said that person, basically that person stole. Because wrong is, uh, kind of based on the, uh, whole sociological aspect. Got him. Not based on uh, that guy. Uh, probably. That's right. We don't have to fight all the guys. Just the ones in our way. Like the ones that prevent doors from opening. We gotta fight these guys. So you see, like if we ever get to a loading screen, I'll uh, I'll, I'll read some of uh, some from Ayer's arguments. Um, oh, it's just like more tries to get through a goodness in itself, and uh, Kant tries to argue. You know, logically, that God does exist because you know these values are intrinsically apparent. But you know, Ayer's Ayer's objective objection to this is that they're all subjective, and you can't put any logical, quantifiable fact. There's a lot of Hume in in Ayer. You can't put any like logical quantifier, quantifiable aspect into uh, into emotivism or, or anything emotional. It makes a lot of sense. Trying to read notes on the run, just bored. I need like, a, I need like a, a floating notebook. I only took a little bit of notes here because it, it was only like um to to get the gist of air. Um, you know, you bounce it off of uh. Whoop, thought that was gonna blow up. It will, but just not yet. So, uh, from a Christian perspective, how do we how do we look at this? Uh, What's the crystal? We did it. It is. It's pretty. We don't need I that. I said, though. what's it do? No, what's it do? Uh, it's like a thing you just pick up and throw. Oh, at what? Uh, whatever you want to, really. Just want to get that. Can I get that? There we go. Um, I don't think we need to fight these guys. <laughs> <laughs> run! I just gotta get down here. And then run more. Oh no. There's a lot of dudes. Dad. I know, we're, we're just running. It's what we do. Dad. Tiny girl. How do you push so them from away? A, what? How do you push them away? Um, I, you can shield bash once you have a three-star shield. Ooh, so sometimes I get lucky. Or I'm a ninja. Oh, that's not right. I wanted that gun. Uh, <laughs> oh, it did get me. You're okay. I am okay. We have like 3,000 enemies spawned on the screen. Unfortunately, they don't drop any loot or anything, you know. Whack at them a little bit more. But it, I think air may make some, some good points. So, um, ah! oh boy. Well, we might, uh, we might lose a life here. <laughs> oh, maybe not. We do have to defeat these guys. They're just too crazy with these exploding little things around us. We might be able to do it now. Oh. Got it. 
Oh, meow, meow. Well, this might hurt. Oh, he didn't shoot at us. Or, uh, swing at us, rather. There's lumbers. This guy might. You just swing. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're doing it. Dude, freaking threaded the needle. Oh my goodness. Bless my soul. You're there it goes. You're only at one heart. 4%, baby. I can still do this. Alright, we made it. Jeez. That was a little crazy. So anyway, he, he claims, he goes over the uh, the, the previous perspectives of uh, intrinsic goodness, or rather goodness itself, which is, uh you know, Paley, which is, the, it's the will of God. He argues from the will of God. Kant himself argues to the will of God based on, you know, observation of fact. Mill goes on the sense of happiness, like the instinctual happiness, the, the greater the individual happiness or the collective happiness. I thought that was a, a, a that doesn't make sense in my Philosophical, philosophical mind. More does the intrinsic goodness. It is self apparently good. Nietzsche has his will to power. Basically, flips the whole ethical stream up on its head. Um, but the uh, Ayer's big thing is that you cannot really express morality in a cognitive sense, or in a cognitive sense. Period. Like any anything that's that's on emotion, uh, you can't express in a logical. Anyway, I went over this a little bit, right? So the uh, the sense he, he puts out mostly the uh, the sense that uh, you know things are wrong based on sociological and psychological issues. Oh, there's little freaking dot things. They're he says you, you can't know they're not the, uh, the little eyeballs that are around us. Oh. Those things. They whenever I hit them they explode if they're shaking. So I gotta be mindful of what's going on. Thank you, Belan. You, you took you you bit the bullet. You threw yourself on that grenade for me. Yeah, watch out. Oh, okay, good. I thought I was going to shoot it. They don't have any shadows below them because of the graphical settings, I believe, so I can't really tell what's going on with them. Okay, we did it. There is a heart there. There it is. Um, wait, those are hearts? There was. Maybe I got it. So anyway, the what the reason why I say there's a lot of Hume inside of this guy, I think there's a key up here. That's why I'm going this way. It's got, oh no, there's not. Well, might Get as well the crystal. The I don't need the crystals. Uh, I'll show you what they do, though. You just throw them. That's all. They don't do anything too special. I wish they were uh, some kind of monetary gain, but no. In fact, we only get like 10 coins or something from this, this chest. There's something so I know, it's heat. I don't need that. Thank you for pointing that out, though. So we put this... Uh, and so, in a cognitive sense, when you when you try to uh, yeah, Hume's Hume's big thing was you can't if, if something does not uh, contain a mathematical or a logical statement, then you cast it to the flames for it's just sophistry and illusion. Uh, that statement itself is a moral claim, so you can't even take that and use it to, you know, basically verify the the the, the pure cognitive sense that he wants to go toward. Um, and so, what Ayer's saying, pardon me. But, what Ayer's saying is you you, uh, you can't make those logical assessments even about kind of emotive fact. And that, that kind of brings the, uh, you know, in the, from the Christian perspective, and C.S. Lewis put it pretty, pretty well, we are, we, are, we are not merely mind we, What's or heart. What's that key? This is a key, yep. This is kind of crystal, which you can, it's pretty opaque. It is a key. We've seen this before, darn it. <laughs> yep, there it is again. This is going to be a little difficult because now we have to carry one of these through here. But he, uh, like, C.S. Lewis's big thing was like, well, maybe that'll stop him. I don't think so, but nope. Is that, uh, oh, jeez. We're going to have to fight through this wave. I believe in Christianity because, not because, uh, like, I believe in the sun, not because I can see it, but by it I see everything else because it makes a lot of sense. When you talk about the evil heart of man, oh, it's just, you know, and then you talk about the mind of God. But you're, you're really referring to a lot of absolutes. We need a poker. Just get these guys out of the way. Pick this up and run. Or die. <laughs> One or the other. There's a heart. You are correct. There is a heart. I appreciate your tiny help. You're a good cheerleader, oh. tiny girl. Yeah, and you can do that. Thank you. There's I will try to. Heart. Luckily, the, this guy. Oh, no. Okay, good. I guess we were out of the hitbox here. Yeah. Okay, finally. Look at this guy, he's frozen. Beautiful. <laughs> Ooh. We had a plan, but it didn't work there. 
Hey, we actually made it. There's a wolf following me. I don't see him. He went. He got lost. lost. Maybe I maybe did. he got lost. Yeah. Poor baby. <laughs> so the uh, he says the air says the the. Uh, The emotive value is basically subjective, subjective, subjectivized based on by the speaker. As one cannot define feelings, because eventually you can't quantify feelings, or, or you know, feelings or value. It'll, you'll hesitate in making lo logical absolutes because things that are emotional cannot be logical at the same time. You know, um, Ben Shapiro is very famous for saying, "Truth does not care about your feelings." Well, then you, you flip the other side around. Feelings don't care about truth. And that's very much, in a sense, you're not just... not even looking at the screen. I'm not. I'm reading my notes. Well, then I'm going to play for it. You're going to what? Blah, blah. No, no, no. No, thank you. Uh, feelings can be expressed and verified without words and logic. But logical expressions about feelings do not necessarily arouse feelings. Does that make sense? Absolutely not. Let's, uh, let's beat the dreams and nightmares again and again and again. So how does this make sense in a Spiral Knights world? I don't know, man. I know that, uh... Our brother Air... Yeah, I believe... I actually believe in his uh, critique of Kant, because Kant tries to, uh... I think Kant tries to, uh, argue his way to God through, uh... The natural order of absolutes and... The, uh... The, the moral law within a person. He does it several ways. But, uh, but I, so, I mean, you look at it, Air's logic, and you can't, you know, you can't quantify emotion. We are both head and heart. Separating those two is what uh, a lot of philosophers try to do. Um, whether you get to the subjectivity, uh, and then once you try to separate them and put, put absolutes accordingly onto them, either absolute emotion or absolute logic, like Nietzsche goes to the logic route, and then you have uh, people like Moore who go the, uh, not, the not necessarily the emotional route, but the, the care and the... Uh, First off, the assumption of values, right? There's at least a value system. And then he goes from the assumption of values to the assumption of, like, moral values. And that's, like, honestly, that's the uh, the biggest difference between, like, European... Oh, we got hit. <sighs> Couldn't even see it, but we did. The assumption of, uh... When you, when you think of, like, rationalistic thought that's happened throughout the years, you have the, um... Oh! The d main difference between... Goodness. What happened? They were on fire. Oh, yes. Yes, they are. That big guy was on fire, too. Ah. <laughs> hey, our, our shield blocks something. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not, I'm not too uh, certain on the inconsistency of that. Do not knock the TV over, please. <laughs> no, that's not I'll funny. Try not to. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I knocked over the TV and the computer broke everything. No. <laughs> that is not funny. <laughs> Silly girl. Yeah, but you can't. The shadow gun you're using. Okay, I do too. It's called a winter grave. Oh. Oh no. Very impressive. We can't. You can't. It's supposed to be daddy serious time in the morning. Where I talk about stuff that's serious. I can actually talk about serious stuff with the silly girl next to me. Mm. <laughs> you are serious too sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like when you take care of your sister. Like you gave her your, her bunny back. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, the uh, being being head and heart and, and uh, just a myriad of of uh, contradictions we humans are. You know, we say that is not right. Is that a logical statement? No, it's it's basically a sociological or subjective one, based on what we think is morally right. Now, then, when you get to the argument of absolutes, I'm still trying to wrap my head around these things. I mean, this philosophy is a lifelong pursuit. You start to get into absolutes, right? But you start to get into things like, well, it's true for you, not for me. Then, But that that's immediately countered by the uh, by the question, is that true for everybody? That statement you just made, that's true for you, not for me. Like, you can't escape absolutes. They're always there, right around the corner. Even if you think you got something that's 100% purely subjective, there's still an absolute in there. Um, you can even put this to the sciences, right? To gravity itself. You get the, um, gravity just does exist. Its values are fairly apparent. Um, rotation of planets does exist. It's apparent. Now, gravity does alter with other things that alter to it. And our life is more like a 
kind of like a dream state. You know, you can't again. Uh, talking about last video, uh, having. Oh, I guess we lost connection for a minute. I'm talking about the uh, the ability. Can you stop teleporting? Just let me whack you. There you go. <laughs> about the <laughs> you know the the inability to uh, produce logic in dreams. It's it's kind of like you can. That's even like half a step away from reality because you can eventually dissect some things to the point of where it's impossible for us to even know. Um, you know, what is gravity? Well, we don't know what it is, but we can, you know, say what it does. What, I mean, do planets orbit? Well, yes, they do. That's apparent. It does break down based on, you know, cosmological issues. But the rotation still does exist. It's just different per planet, per star. But there still is a concept of rotation. Same with, like, concept. And we get, we get these, con this is what our brains are very good at doing. We find logical concepts and we latch onto them. We try to make absolutes, but then then we uh, we have the a little bit of subjectivity plus emotion that is triggered by either absolutes or violations of, of uh, what we would consider absolutes. Anyway, how many uh, how many how many gremlins do you count here below? Five thousand. Um, <laughs> is that a number? <laughs> three, Two. Three. This is like. In uh, Swords of Ditto, this would be like the big squish. Mount my, my gun. No, that's a gun. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's like the big squish. Is, yeah. is there something left? Oh, hello. What brings you to my castle? My white castle filled with black dots. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's use this one. We light a couple on fire. Fire on these slimes is so effective here. So, else. yeah, well, except for fire monsters, right? Probably not very effective on them. Well, water they got, monsters? Yes, fire monsters. One thing I... I oh, said water monsters. Water monsters? Oh, I got heads, heads, heads and on, so it's, it's difficult for me to hear you sometimes. Well... Water it, against fire. Yeah, but the water might turn into steam, and then you create an air Pokemon, and then, then you wouldn't know what to do with yourself. The, uh, I can appreciate Kant, I can appreciate Hume, I can appreciate air, because air brings up a very good point, where you can't, though we are a conundrum of two things, and you, when, even when you think of the male and female She's species, waiting. Yep, and even when you think of the male and the female species, you're thinking of, like, you know, when God proclaims man, man male and woman, he, he created them, and women and man, he created them, he says three times, are, are, uh, that's one of the reasons why, like, in prisons, like, even... Those that violate children in their youth and their sexuality are, are like the most heinous. You can, it's it's just something that at our core that when you violate it, it's uh, even even though the murderers will, will be like, yo, that's not that's not cool. And they will uh, they will subject you to their worldview on that on that issue. But it's something that's that's written in us. Um, interesting interestingly enough, when they did a survey on uh, the different cultures of the world. There's two things that are consistent, um, one of which is marriage, and the other is theft. Both, both are, if you violate them, that is wrong. Um, now they might have different, you know, laws and agreements on what those things are, but just like the, you know, law of gravity and the, excuse me, you not Lena Meyer, thank you. Just like the law of gravity and stuff like that, though, though they might break down, they, though they might be points of violation. They might be points of, points of alteration. You can't argue with the fact that it still does exist based on observation. You know, the old uh, tautological argument. Ooh, I don't want to charge that. There we go. We're still alive somehow. Okay, let's use the... Uh, let's use our big squish gun, right? It, it isn't a big squish. Well, it's, I mean... Maybe it's like a giant water balloon. Squish, 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 squish. And it does freeze them, too. I thought it was called Shadow. Because um, it looks like a shadow. It does shadow damage, but it's called the Winter Grave. They named the gun for me. Sometimes you, you can't name everything. We are, we are allowed to name the animals, though. Do you remember that? In Genesis? Yeah. That's what God. That was, oh. That's what I did in school. You named the animals. 
Harrison. Wait, wait. You gave them names? I thought we already did that. No. We counted them. Oh, oh, they got me with a one-two combo. It's okay, we can still do this. We get a we get one freebie. That was one heck of a hit. We gotta get rid of these guys. Just, I mean it, the fact that it doesn't go through those eyeball things just kinda blows my mind. Gotcha. What eyeball things? Those little circular eyeball things that pink? No, they're not pink. They're black. Let's see if I can pink spot one. That, did you see that one? See that right there? Oh yeah. Alright. Hard to see, but whenever they start shaking, if you shoot them, they blow up. And for some reason, they're just like an impenetrable force that stops my Winter Grave bullet. Can we do this? Oh, no. pink. Ooh, well, it's not good. I knew we were going to take a blow there. So my next set, if I ever do Vanna enough, just save up for some, like, ancient armor. Do we do it? Oh, no, there's still a dude left here. Okay. Oh, no, it seems to be a never-ending stream of dudes. I believe this is the last wave. Actually, I know this is the last wave unless things have just drastically changed from this level and up. There's too many zombies. There are quite a bit of zombies. I guess I could make it a little bit more the interesting and just jump are in there. Armed and they're attacking. Well, the zombies have. Oh, that's an example of like, hey, I couldn't see it. It materialized in front of my face. But I guess we are kind of, you know, fight fighting in like a cloud. This reminds me of like when Finn goes to outer space and his vision starts getting all blackened. And then you, so I guess maybe we're running out of oxygen. And that's why we, we have to view the world this way. I don't know. Besides it being, the, the black squares just being straight up annoying. It, it, and it, and we, they do mask the, uh... We watched the last episode of Adventure Time last night. I wish there was more. I don't know, that was pretty cool though, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Bemo is the king of Ooh. <laughs> yeah, but he, he, uh, you start getting black dots in your vision. But black then, squares. So, you are correct. Right now, in this game, you get black squares in your vision. But in reality, it's usually black dots that you get in your vision when you start being deprived of oxygen. Does that make sense? No. You start, you no, okay. <laughs> well, luckily, hopefully, you'll never have the, uh, chance to you know have that happen to you because that'd be love, horrible. Love, love, love. Hey, is that all I sound it's like when I talk? Way. <laughs> Focus on fighting. I'm, I'm actually just I feel like I'm in a version of NASCAR except when, <laughs> except the NASCAR car fires shots in the crowd every so often. <laughs> what a great game. <laughs> Kaboom. I know lots of fire Pokemon. That's good. Do you know fire Pokemon that have guns? No, there's no such Stop. thing as a Pokemon Stop moving my chair. Guns. Stop moving my chair. Thank you. <laughs> this is not crazy time. Crazy time is after school. Did I not get him? It's not. What's, what's left? Oh, sorry. The guy knocking on the door. Land, please just take one of them out. Can you take that guy out? Because there's like still 30,000 things out here. To. No, she's, she's just knocking on the door. Please just... Okay, good. We did one. Hey, your eyes. So we did. So getting back to air for 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 a, a sense, he when he goes on to like art. Excuse me. When he goes on to uh, arguing stuff, he says you can argue values if a value system is presupposed. So. Regardless if you believe in absolute, so this this is another argument for absolutes, right? If you believe in, if you're more subjective or objective when it comes to absolutes, you cannot deny that a system does exist, that the, there is a measurement. Um, this goes with the Ravi Zacharias kind of argument, you know. Um, how can, he, he gets a lot of his philosophy from questions. People ask him questions, he gives pretty good answers. You know, if, how, there can't be, such a thing as God, because there's so much evil. And he, he posits, uh, you know, well, such a thing as evil, there must be such party a thing as good. Boxes. What? Party boxes. Yep. If there's such a thing as good, there has to be such a thing as evil. If there's such a thing as evil, there has to be such a thing as a moral law. If there has to be a such a thing as a moral law, there has to be a moral law giver. And we stop at the moral law sense because, you know, why do you need a moral law? Well, 
you have to have something that transcends human opinion. Um, because you, we assume that human opinion, it's a question either for a person, or a by a person, or about a person, when we talk about evil. So we assume there's a value, and even if you go to the, the animalistic sense, where, where, where it's not just, or the uh, Sam Harris sense, where it's not just, uh, you know, people, it's animals too, cognitive thinking, like, well, there's still a value system there. Animals are still viewed higher than rocks, right, and minerals. We're not going to be sad because, you know, we killed all the rocks. Willow, would you be sad if we killed all the rocks? What rocks? There you go. Then a girl. <laughs> would you be sad for the salt if we ate, this, if we ate salt? You're telling me what are in your heart. Okay. So I wouldn't do anything <laughs> because you would teach yourself. Okay. I like where you're going with this. <laughs> So we have maybe like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes for me to get out of here in a decent time. Um, I do want to read a little bit, but uh, you know, as far as this being a story time. Uh, I'm gonna, next time I do this, if you blah blah during serious philosophy time, I'm either I'm gonna do one of two things. One, Make you sit with tape on your mouth, or two, <laughs> tickle you to till you pee your pants, or something. <laughs> one or the other. I'm not sure which. Let's see what our friends are doing. Partly metal, partly real. It's Silverhawk. Can't join him. Darn it. Why? He won't let me. What is uh? No, no, no. I meant to hit this button. <laughs> Her terror, nature of the best beast. Nature of the beast. Want to do nature of the beast? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you cry, why, 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 why? We have a new arcade loadout, right? Voltage slash beautiful. Blah blah blah. We might be able to take care of this or we might not. I don't know. So what was the? Let me see. There's just I'll, I'll just read one thing. Where did I put my notebook? Willow, what have you done with my notes? I didn't do anything. Page three forty top. All right. So this goes over. That can't be it. Your bookmark section. is right here. Anyway, it says, in short, we find the argument as possible on moral questions only if some system of values You're is playing presupposed. With someone. I'm reading. If our opponent concurs with us in expressing moral disapproval of all actions of a given type, then we may get him to c condemn a particular action by bringing forward arguments to show action is of a certain yeah, type. But right. the question whether that action does or does not belong to the type is a plain question of fact. Given that a man has certain moral principles, we argue that he must, in order to be consistent, react morally to certain things in a certain way. We do not and cannot argue that about the validity of these moral principles. We are merely praised or condemned them in light of our own feelings. So we just argue in a sense of feeling, but there's, there still is a system. We cannot argue with that. And because there is a system, okay, we can do this. Because there is a system, you can't get away from the the presupposition of absolutes. There is, there Whoa. is. If there is Those something, though you might not know the, the complete answer yeah. to it, it still is there. There is still structure. There is still a human being. We're not giant mass amoebas. They're just kind of, you know, walking around in oblivion. You know, there's, you don't see, so, and structure is even apparent yeah. in nature. This is, oh my goodness. You're just into this game. It's like, you can't, uh, time plus matter plus chance plus evolution does not dictate structure does not dictate my bone structure. Why am I not just a random bunch of cancerous like teeth and bone and everything else? There's, like the, these questions like kind of get to me. Like I I, the, I can understand why Darwin ha Darwin has um you know the old evolution paradigm where he came from, why he, why he wanted to go on to it. Um you know scientific atheism itself is just a you know it's a religion in itself. Even though you say it isn't, you're basically denying the definition of what belief is. The, uh, it, it doesn't 
really answer a lot of questions. It, sa it states a lot of facts, it gives a lot of theory, but then it, it dissolves in, under its own scrutiny. How do you know if God existed? How do you know he created the world? Were you there? Well, no. But were you there when things evolved? When was the last time you saw a fish with an arm? You went that way. You did. Well, then when was the last time you saw a fish with an arm? Never. Just one. Not two. Just one. Never. I yeah, never. <laughs> Nobody has. It's silly to think about that that's even a thing. Wait, their fins are arms. Yeah, but they're not arms. They don't have fingers. They don't like humans don't suddenly grow a third or fourth or sixth finger or arm. It just it's like this stuff doesn't happen. Maybe it does happen. I've never seen it, and you know, scientism is just kind of holding this out in front of me, saying, you know, you, you can never know. We know. We're just not going to tell you. The, it's also a, a moral uh, moral uh, call to uh, say I'm going to tell the truth. In my scientific claims, because it's actually a, a uh, um, not a violation, but kind of a contradiction. If something will make you more money, well, why wouldn't you lie about it? it makes more sense, right? Because that's more tangible. But we do know it's it's general, generally accepted that lying is, is not good. It goes away from truth. Mecca, you were just a freaking raging beast, man. I cannot touch you. Just continue on with my Who's Mecca? grave. What'd you say? Who's Mecca? He got his neck off. Mecca. Mecca E.T. I mean E.T. <laughs> Sorry. He's right there. It's that guy. He's my friend. My best friend. My second best friend. <laughs> Next to Mike. Mike Mike has to take that trump card. He's Mike. Why are there like tiny things following him? Why is Mike following me? He's Mike. That's what he does. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. I'll take the damage. I'm a man. God raised me in the yard like a man. <laughs> Why are you going back? Why are you standing there? <coughs> That's right. See, mostly the answers you get in philosophy, too. Just a bunch of fart noises. <laughs> Kaboom. <coughs> oh, he's frozen. We helped him. I don't know why people go this way. Hello. Oh, we're so good at aiming. Stop walking back and forth. That's our, that's our weakness. <laughs> no, it, no. What the? <laughs> How dare you move back and forth in a consistent direction? <coughs> You're faster. I'm tinier. What Kaboom. did your character say? What does my character say? What did your character say? Oh, I said LOL. Short for laughing out loud. Why? Because uh, I think he got hit by an exploding block. Pop a pill here. There we go. What was that? This that's like John Wick, John Wick sense. You know, he goes to the doctor and takes a pill, and suddenly he has full function of everything, even though he was uh, shot and stuff. All right, no, thank you. No, no, screaming! Ah, oh, I'm not early. screaming. <laughs> Are you barking at the moon? Stretching. <laughs> You're gonna pee your pants. Right? <laughs> <coughs> don't cough on me. Don't, uh, don't roar on me. <laughs> Daddy wants to even good. roar. Uh. No, thank you. What are you gonna do now? Uh, I'm gonna beat some bad guys. Nature of the beast. Ooh, with the forest. No, I like this. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh. Yes. Sleepy little wolvers. Dude, I forget. It's a uh, Callahan. That's it, right? Forgot the name of that gun for a minute. It was the slug and a Callahan. I remember getting the Callahan. So I wanted a gun of each damage type, and that was the only, like, Pierce gun. 
Besides the blitz needle, I didn't really want the blitz needle. That sword is not a gun. Yeah, you're right, swords are not guns. Wow. That poor thing. What poor thing? That poor thing. That got shot in the head. <laughs> and I went, Whoa. Are you even watching the game? I am, but I didn't see anything. There was a lot going on, isn't there? Too much. I like it that it's a forest now. Me too. I like the, uh, the green stages the best. Did you know that the sun actually produces green light? No. Yeah, and that's why plants are green. Because they want to reflect the uh, the most, the more harmful energy of the sun. They want to use a... Well, that, that, that's why they think, anyway. They want to use the, uh, the the lesser energy to their, their value and not get so much of the radiation and stuff in them. I thought that was a neat thing. We saw that on One Strange Rock. It's okay. There's a, They talk about a lot of stuff there. So I yeah, too much that I have to plug my ears. No. <laughs> You're usually busy eating food because that's one of the few shows we watch while we're eating. It's a lot of good stuff in that hey, show. Hey, come on. Yeah, ta, 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 ta. One down, two down. Yeah, ta, ta, ta. Oh my goodness. I'm just the. <laughs> you just thank you. Excuse me. Stop teleporting. Thank you. How does it teleport? It digs a hole? Yep, they dig a hole and they pop out of another one like a fox. Foxes. They're foxes. Like fox foxes. from uh, from Star Fox. You ever play Star Fox? No. What is Star Fox? It's a game where a fox drives a spaceship. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's funny. How dare you laugh at the <laughs> one of the first polygon-based games ever. Come, buddy. We did it. It was a close one. <laughs> anyway, so, so we bounce off this uh, motivism to, for, like, C.S. Lewis. Both of you have the same sword. Yeah, we do have the same sword, and that's okay. And there's, like, something following it, a trail? Uh, Ooh! So, when, when looking at the absolute sense, we look at the empirical stuff, right? We have to look at the stuff based on fact. There, there are, we can recognize that there are, at least there should be, systems of absolutes. It's, it's, it's just, it, it's, uh, tautological, tot, 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 right? <laughs> I don't that know. Some, I don't know all word. the words. What? That's not even a word. It is a word. Tautological is a word. It's blub. That I only hear blub and blub. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I don't talk philosophy with my seven-year-old in the room. Just deep thinking. Just, well, that's again. You know, you come to the kingdom as a little child. Do you have to be a genius to understand? Um, should you have to be a genius to understand philosophy and, and absolutes? No. No, no, not really. And yeah, even you can answer that. Some things are good, some things are bad, some things are soft, some things are hard. You can argue them to the nth degree, just like this short some man, right? Are if you have a man who's one inch tall, Willow, is he a short man? Yeah. What if he's two inches tall? Is he still short? Yeah. What if he's three inches tall? Is he still short? Yeah. So we keep going, what if he's a hundred inches tall? Is he still short? So when exactly does he become a tall man? Like fifty inches. Fifty. Well, what about forty-nine? Wouldn't he be tall? It's pretty close. But you still can't argue the fact that there is height, and he is a person. Regardless if they break down or not, we we we, we symbolize these things to you know make a little shortcuts in our brain. To, uh, I'm my stuff to, and to make sense of them, too. We want the world to make sense. We want things to make sense, because when things make sense, they tend to synergize. How did you get on my lap? Did I not say there's no daddy lap early in the morning? No. Yes, I did. <laughs> like, right when you got here. I didn't even say that. Hold on. Right. Nobody. All right, let's go peddle our wares. Town Square. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were 
people call people carrying chests. Well, we have, and there's also the other thing you can go toward is a sense of oddness. Like there's still a sense oh. of oddness. You can argue on the you know the the inches and like you know the the tall man versus the short man. You can you can argue on the differences based baby, on baby, 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 baby. based on the uh, di- different society you're in. Based on the babies. The, exactly. That's the <laughs> philosophy we're, we're worried about here is the, the baby one. Is there anybody in this game? Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Let's go to Haven 1. There's usually a popular crowd at 4.45 in the morning. <laughs> is this where Lego hangs out? I forgot I had coffee left. There's fewer. It used to be the popular thing to uh, just sit here and stare at the water fountain, listen to the cool calmness. I get like, there are people here who are so rich, and I've never heard of them, except for this guy. Rainbow. He is the Rainbow Lord. What? Like even his cat gear is beautiful. <laughs> He's like crying over here, and then pooping out leaves over here. <laughs> And then he has boosters. And then he's like dizzy with stars. And then he has... P- <laughs> he uh-huh. decorated a fencing jacket. Beautiful. His he headset's a- amazing. His heart. New Jersey. He has wings and rainbows. He must be a real man. That's very subjective, right? So the thing about this uh, philosophy is... Like, you have to put it on par with reality. What, what is the natural outworking if you have something that you can't quantify in motives? Like, how does that affect you in real life? <laughs> makes you sneeze, apparently. <laughs> I just sneezed. You did? For reality. You, you just sneezed in reality. You sure did. I said for reality. For reality. <laughs> All right, so in the name of reality, I sneeze. Excuse me. Can you... Can you be professional? Very serious. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask you to go lay down for a minute because Daddy needs to shut things down. I gotta go make your lunch and I gotta get ready for work. Okay. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Can you lean back so I can type, please? All right. We're gonna sell our tails. We'll sell three of them. Oh, oh, oh. For like. Man, this is how we make our millions and billions. Probably maybe a million over our lifetime. Chroma. You know, once the uh, sun starts to rise on the east coast, people do appear and start buying stuff. Like, I don't understand what the. Uh, so there, if there are so few people in this game. The, the, the other big one of the big arguments in the forums is this this, this, this game's dying. Why never, why does everybody buy my stuff? Which only new people would. Philosophy of Spiral Knights. Not everything is revealed to us. We must accept this. Not everything about reality. When you uh, mathematically again, eleven dimensions. Brother Stephen Hawking proved this. Well, he says that. In order for uh, you know some of the mathematical formulas to actually take hold and work, there have to be eleven dimensions. And uh, you, the way he, he he shows how they're intertwined with realities is uh, it's very neat. I recommend reading up on that because you can see if, if if even if you don't go to the whole underpinnings of absolutes, you can still see something beneath. Even like searching mathematics, searching history. Uh, we can we can look through history and, and you know see things that we should and should not do. We can choose to be ignorant of it, or we can choose to study it. Uh, and this that's one of the reasons why the Bible, I believe, is so important because it's it's God's story of the world. It is a history book, His story. Get it? Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. So when you look at the history of mankind, you see like it, it, there, if the Bible was such a perfect book. It would have nothing but perfection inside of it, right? But instead, it shows a lot of human fallacies. Specifically, like, if you get into the book of Kings, 
and the book of Judges, where man did everything that he thought was right in his own eyes, constantly. And there was no king in Israel. Yeah, we're going to look for the whap dust. Or dust, too silly. Okay. You have no warp dust. So what uh, what Ayer does, though, is he, he recognizes the ability that um, when, you, when you look at just human thought, you can't, it's, it's impossible to measure one against the other. They're, they're both kind of in tangent, they're in tandem with each other, emotion versus logic. And we are, we are creatures of both. You can't be one or the other because we, we will be destined to, uh, you know, basically eradicate ourselves. So you gonna take things off? <coughs> Help increase my frame rate. You are so beautiful. <laughs> You're pretty. It's probably another dude, but one dude can call another dude pretty, right? I am smoking bubbles. <laughs> anyway, I gotta get to working all that good stuff, so once again, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video. Click the like button, subscribe. <laughs> If you want to see more in the future, uh, I, I archive these on YouTube. If you want to, you know, watch Spiral Nights and discuss more philosophy, you can pop some in the comments there. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Say goodbye, tiny girl. Bye bye.